Boa tarde a todos. Nós vamos dar início aí ao nosso último painel do dia, justamente com a palestra é, do ministro é, Luiz Alberto Gurgel de Faria, a quem desde já agradeço é, por ter aceitado o convite aí do IBDT. Para nós é uma honra tê-lo aqui é, nesse congresso. E é, justamente que vai falar sobre o tema tributação na importação e exportação de serviços na visão dos tribunais é, brasileiros. Né? É, como todos sabem, o ministro Luiz Gurgel é ministro do STJ, ele é doutor... So, repeating, we have here the minister Luiz Alberto Gurgel de Faria, Superior Court of Justice Minister, and PhD and Master Federal University of Pernambuco. He will talk about taxation on the import and export of services in the view of the Brazilian court. Uh, so, so you're talking about a very important theme, very important in terms of taxation, and I thank you for accepting the invitation by IBDT, I thank you. And now I pass the floor to you. Have a good talk. Thank you, Professor, for inviting me. Last time we've been together, it was here in Brasilia in an event of IBDT. Remember the opportunity we had to have a good debate concerning tax law. Uh, okay, it's remote, but it's what we can do today. So my first words, thank you and wishing well to everybody that is here in this event, globally and locally. And we hope that very soon we'll do events with the presence of people in events that are so important, not remotely, but presently. But for the moment, we have the priority that's the health of the population. And so I would like to thank Professor Schwery, too, the person that invited me directly, and greeting Professor Piroga and Schwery, I also greet the others that are part of the IBDT tax law entity and people that are part of this event, the attendees and the experts of the subject in this event that's so important, the eighth event. So exactly that. Uh, that's the eighth form concerning tax law, international tax law. The theme we will approach today, Professor Kiroga has already the opportunity to talk about it, exactly the point involving import tax law and importation of service. We will talk about three taxes, ISCS, CID, and on income tax. At source. Okay, we know that the attendees understand the subject very well. But before talking about this, with the view of uh, the high courts, I would like to talk about the approach in terms of didactic aspects. Uh, so, very briefly commenting the doctrine of the three taxes and also bringing the view of our courts, mainly the high court, concerning the issues, the tax issues involving ISS, that's uh, the tax on services, and also the tax withheld at source. The ISS that I mentioned, the Complementary Law of 2003-816, it regulates it, the tax on services, and in the first clauses, it deals with import of services and export of services. And uh, Article 1, Paragraph 1, concerning service importation. The clause two says there is no levy in case of ISS when there is exportation of services. 
The detail concerning exportation of services, there are controversies. The expression that's used in paragraph one, result, it says, it's not in the frame of clause one, no levying, services developed, which result is verified even in the case the payment is done by the resident. I would say that when it refers to tax on services concerning importation, exportation, sorry, the key point to do the interpretation of non-levying is exactly where is the result. Of course, interpretation of this word is complex when it refers to the doutrine, if you consider the thesis of the consumption and if you see the utility. We will try later on to explain it better uh, with some lines only. The result consumption, what is it? If the service was done in this country, even it's used abroad, then the result is presented here. So there is, in this case, the tax on service here. So the rule, the Article 2, does not apply. And so in the doctrine, act, the result, i.e., the service was done here, but it will be useful and it will be used abroad. If it's used abroad, who advocates this thesis? So there is no ISS tax collection here in Brazil. As I said, I have to be brief concerning the relation of the doctrine of each tax, and then I'll go to cases. So talking about the three directly and briefly about uh, doctrine and generation, and uh, so I'll pass to the second tax. Second one is CG. It means in the case, the implementation of a law that became enforced in 2000 and then amendment 2001, so, law 168. What is it? It's to foster, in that case, the technology in the, our country. So, if we are collecting the tax on the services in technology, uh, so there is an incentive program to technology, to science. So, the values have to be passed on to the segment. So the main law that regulates that is the law 10168 of the year 2000, which are, in terms of doctrine, the issues here concerning this tax. First, extraordinary, which we will discuss. It was then placed, but we anticipate that concerning this CIDE, this tax, in this case, we discuss the constitutionality of the tax. And secondly, there is a question, the CD, is it you, in any situation when you send royalties abroad or only when you have a the transfer of technology. This is another issue that is being approached in terms of doctrine. So it's very intriguing. For the moment, we concentrate concerning the high courts that they give the last word about this subject. And now a Supreme Court in this case, the 
high court justice high courts so tax withheld at source we know it's the oldest that we deal there are several others but it's the bill 5000 of uh, 1947 when there is payment to people that live abroad resident abroad be it individual or company you have to collect taxes so withheld at source so exactly that's the idea 1947's year almost 70 years over 70 years it refers to payment to people resident abroad what are the issues that we have concerning the high courts concerning this tax we held at source some questions when they involve treaties between countries to avoid by taxation and also or double taxation sorry and uh, in case of the high courts it involves moments where tax withheld at source refer to the availability economic or legal availability to recognize the conduction circumstance so in, in summary i say that you have the attendees here that are excellent i'm just mentioning i just want to show the three taxes concerning legislation and doctrine okay this theme is very extensive and uh, i cannot bring every detail every debate involving the doctrine the view that we propose to do is the view of the brazilian courts so we decide to do this introduction that is summarized and then bring the way the courts are analyzing these taxes i will study okay i had the report of a case the, it is a special appeal uh, in Rio Grande do Sul, and the process was uh, judged there in 2016. And in my concept, it involved a very important and interesting case. In summary, a company in Porto Alegre, Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil, hired to develop an engineering project hired by France, so they did the engineering project. This project specifically was to be done in France. I do, I'm not sure, but I believe it's agribusiness. Two projects, engineering projects, and the hiring was done. And the company uh, required the service. So we had a discussion. The project, the service was executed, was performed in terms of planning. It was done here. The planning was done here. But activating it would be in France. It was designed to be used in another country, another place with all the details in order the project could work abroad in France. What was the analysis done? In that case, I'll bring uh, all the steps that it, it crossed all the branches until the, uh, it reached the high court. The imp uh, impression, the first instance was that the result was in Brazil because the theory was that the consumption was there. The service hired was an engineering project a design, and design was done here, and consume, consumption was done here. So the fact that this project was would be implemented in France would not change it, considering importation of service. So the theory adopted was the result consumption. So 
for Rio Grande do Sul court, the concept was changed. Interpretation that was done pointed out that we should adopt the result of utility. The project, the design was done here, but the result is abroad, is in France. So this project, it was designed here. It could be designed everywhere, anywhere. It was hired and it would it was hired to be used there. So the result is to acknowledge there. So non-divine of taxation in case of ISS, uh, tax on services. Uh, so it goes to high court. I know that, uh, of course, uh, you all know that. The attendees all know that, but examining the facts in the Superior Court of Justice. Uh, so it was well presented. All the criteria adopted for the High Court's decision were there in the accord. So, of course, the matter to be decided would be there is no re-examination of the case because the agreement is already there. Now, just to give some uh, detail to the situation, there was a debate that ISS or in tax on service, is it direct or indirect? Uh, so the Supreme Court ruling considered that there would be the necessity that the company that was doing the requirement, the payment of ISS, the tax on services, they were saying that they were authorized by the person that ordered the service or the company that ordered the service to do it likewise. And so the interpretation Hugh Grand do Sul was that they would not apply the Article 166, that it would be a direct tax that would wait for the high court's decision. And so ISS, tax on services, in principle, it is indirect, but according to the legislation, it can be direct. And so every legislation has the possibility to analyze it, specifically in this case, the federal district. Concerning Article 166, it could not be important because the law referred to indirect tax, but the party had presented the authorization by the borrower of the service, the person that ordered the service. So it was fulfilled correctly. I did not have to take a long time to analyze, to analyze it because it's an indirect tax but the Article 166 was there because it was fulfilled with the due authorization. So what I've noticed, in fact, there's no that facts cannot be argued. So the project was drawn here with the Office of this engineering company in Porto Alegre municipality, but this project will not be useful here. It cannot be carried out here in the country due to dimension, structure, and so forth. But I was presented, this project will be used in France, two different sites, so the, utility, the usefulness of the service would be abroad. So then I adopted the thesis of the result of its usefulness. I interpreted that there would not be ISS tax on services levied because it was regarding a tax over on services that was exported because it could go to the France, the use and the outcome would be in France. So 
There's a second case. My process was brewed in 016. Now, just to show a parallel line, this first case ruled by me was 016 because they don't reach the higher courts regarding merit per se. I found a second case of merit in 06, 10 years prior to the case I judged. And I will inform you special appeal 831-124 in Rio de Janeiro and special appeal 831-124 Rio de Janeiro in the Supreme Court of Rio in the first group. One curiosity, this formation of the first group in 06 is fully extinct. There's no member of this first group. The reporter was José Delgado. And so I will sum do a summary to show you the different ways of interpreting it and what had and what we have. What was the scenario? A company located in Petrópolis Municipality, Rio de Janeiro. This company was engaged to review and turbines. So I was concerned when I saw retifying turbines, I would not be very pleased of using a plane that used retified turbines. So I hope it's just maintenance. But at the time I thought about this to retify turbines. So these turbines were foreign imported and the service was carried out in the municipality of Petrópolis. The service was carried out there, test also, but afterwards the turbines were returned to the country from where they came and they then were accoplated to the aircraft and it used for different international routes. What was the interpretation by the first group in that composition by majority? Mine was not unanimous, it was not unanimous, but the second case, no. Decision by majority, the interpretation. In fact, what is service? Retifying service, repair services, so it's mending turbines, we can say. So, as of the moment this service was carried out in Petrópolis, here we have the outcome in the same country. There was no outcome out of the country, so there was the existence on taxes levied on services, not recognized in the concrete case, the non levied of ISS. So the export was not recognized in this case. So it was Saudi Louisa Vard now deceased. Unfortunately, he, his vote was disregard and he did the I went to check to look at his vote but in practice he said the service although is carried out in Brazil but it was is going to be used abroad these turbines is not going to be used in Brazil aircraft in Brazil turbines to be used abroad so the company that engaged the services is foreign turbines will be used a foreign so exports of service so therefore he thought that the service on taxes on services should not be collected but he was one his vote was won by the majority so conversely to what i have shown in the first case the interpretation was in the sense that the outcome conforming services carried out here doesn't matter where it will be used and therefore it upheld the requirement of taxes on services being so we have here two scenarios that are different within the same source the first group 
but if we have another case it might have a different decision because the first group has already changed so a code for process procedures so we then can uniform the treatment given to this magic word to say if there's an interpretation or export of services. This is the, the magic for me, it's the result, confirming use. In this case, let's hope that afterwards, perhaps this subject will reach the first section and can have one uniformization within the group. And I will talk with you the number. But the third case, we cannot give you so many details because at the beginning of the judgment, and there was a time where it's been studied. This is special appeal, one million hundred fifty. 353 South Paulo, the procedure in my, I did the report, I started a judging in May 19020, and for the time being, the, it's two by one, so the subject is quite open, and why this process is very interesting and relevant, because it's the first process debating services regarding capital market, services export. So when you have the administrator and fund manager that in fact is abroad, it's specifically, this fund is headquartered in United States. So this is headquartered in the municipality of Sao Paulo, but for the management of the fund, I'm sorry, is done in USA, enforcing not only values there, they, they invest in Brazil, they invest in Venezuela and many other countries. And then there's an interesting aspect because because it's doing the management is located in the country for the management services, but but funds that are abroad and the outcome. This is the magic group. This result. The outcome happens here or abroad because it was not yet ruled. I will not bring you more elements on the case. Obviously, we don't have it. But the debate is interesting. The opinion, the vote was announced for mine and Minister Regina. And this was the sense that it would be the taxation. The utility would be reconsidered. That's the interpretation we presented. But Minister Napoleon had another interpretation saying that the result would be done abroad. So there would be no levying because it was exportation. Let us say, let's see the next chapters and I cannot anticipate the results because effectively the case is being judged. And uh, uh, I mentioned that, no problem, because it's public. Uh, so it was telepresential section. And what we're doing here and discovering here, the details is just concerning the theoretical part. Uh, the case is object of analysis. So we, let us say we have a break here concerning ISS, tax on service, and uh, we can talk about the other taxes as well and bring to you situations involving CG, another tax, CIDE. That's the economic demand when you send money abroad, either because you have royalties payment or technical no technology transfer and you don't have this letter when you are just doing payments by software use 
or any other technology or rights that are involved on that case specifically. And I say regarding CIV, we have extraordinary appeal where in the case is being examined by the Supreme Federal Court. Uh, now we have during the last 11th, 6th, the agenda uh, 125, I repute the extraordinary appeal, 928, 943, Sao Paulo. Fux, Minister of the Reporter, Chairman of our Supreme Court. Now, so let's see if this process will truly be placed in the agenda for the next days. It's already in the agenda, but we all know that Minister Fuchs, as I said, we all know he he's down with COVID. So let's wait and see and hope that he's healthy enough so to take on this case. Some points that I chose is just to bring you the news. What some of the cases I have the opportunity to check initially of this process, and obviously regarding extraordinary appeal that was mentioned regarding advocating constitutionality regarding the here, the technology area and sizes. So let's say that either in the economy that resulted in taxes being levied, this area would not be within the economic scope, but social scope. And with this, we had a deviation of purpose, so it would not have the collection of the economic domain and the incentive to technology to be through taxes on the overall and uh, not through SIF. I'm not endorsing any argument, I stress, just listing arguments that were presented. Another argument presented for this repercussion regarding the advocated constitutionality of the SIF is regarding not being referred taxpayers in the case that needed to call pay the seat had no relation with the issue of the incentive to technology amongst other arguments that in the case are presented. So let's wait for the Supreme Court to judge and rule on this subject matter is a siege of a considerable amount. The calculation is based on payments paid abroad and so Let's say it's not an amount that one can not take into account. As an example, I need know that in the case it's regarding what's happening within the Brazilian court scope. But just an example, recently an important ruling regarding CAFI involving rendering of services and therefore seed remittance to abroad and afraid of Petrobras in regarding a platform for petrol and and also tax planning and so things. Just to give you the uh, background, I want just to address uh, those has cases that went to court. Just to give you an idea, the fine was two million reais. So see that values and amounts involved in the seed remittance uh, depending on the contract. Here has been analyzed, they are substantial values. So the subject regarding Petrobras, I, I stress its freight contract and regarding services also, the engagement of services company would not be enough on according to CAFs ruling for payment of personnel, in fact, could not be a freight contract, but in fact, services. So payment through this remittance and so forth. These are several subjects that probably will go into court. But regarding the reference of this case of CAF, it was just to show you how important shares 
are also being involved on the siege remittance. So we bring to the second case. This is Judge Special Appeal 1772678 by the Federal District ruled by the first group, the process. I was the reporter. Ruling was unanimous, but there was a debate very interesting because um, I asked the opinions. Regina Helena, attorney at law, and she's very well rounded on tax issues. And she's from PUC, Sao Paulo. Regina uh, Helena asked her opinion, and I will summarize the case to bring you the ruling which was by the Supreme Court involved telecom services, specifically regarding international site, so international services of telecom. What was at stake? In fact, when the international call is made, carriers here in Brazil they use our e domestic network regarding the churning for international communication. But when they leave our country, they use foreign network outside. So what we have in the wording of telecom services, they use signed, signed exit traffic when the connect call is made abroad it's connected to the foreign network. You use this abroad, and by using this network abroad, so you must pay for pay the companies abroad for using their network. What was the question? This is not regarding services of telecom. What well, the question is, if when companies of telecommunications is telecom companies told in the country, they made payments for companies abroad regarding the churn, exit churn. Is there exemption regarding CD remittance and income tax withheld at source? What was the argument and the thesis behind this by the companies that in fact, there was an international treaty that would give the exemption. And therefore, by doing so regarding services, it would encompass all scenarios of taxation in that sort of specific transaction. The telecom services taxes, ICMS, on the circulation of goods, because most services are subject to I, taxes on services, but as for telecommunication and intermunicipality transportation and interstate communication is on the circulation of goods and it's collected by the state. So there was international treaty bringing this exemption regarding the tax on the circulation of goods. Questioning the situation extended to CG remittance and to income tax held at source, that was a question. First, there was concerning the ordinary branches, questioning concerning the bringing in of this treaty, uh, e, internal civilization. So it is seen in our constitution, having the treaty here, and so in the first branch and second, it's been discussed in the regional court. The, the interpretation was that first, no, it was not regularly done. So in the second, yes, there was this internalization. So, and uh, so the order was in force. So, what we have to say, specifically, what was in force? It was the service specifically, or is it extended to other situations like the conductor circumstance? And so, 
I, the Melbourne Treaty, I took note. When was it done internally? The year it was done. And analyzing that clause and norm, we observed that the exemption, the assumption that was there specifically referred to the facto that uh, brought the situation. So it did not refer to other taxes. So exemption was acknowledged. So the exemption was directed to the tax on service, but it was not extended to CG remittance, and it wouldn't extend also to tax withheld at source. So interpretation of the first branch did concerning CG remittance, it's a tax. I also mentioned the tax withheld at source. It was necessary to have this divine. So the company, the telecom companies in Brazil are doing payments and uh, outboard and using the network, communication network, and using it abroad and paying for the presence there. So there is this necessity to be held tax at source. That's the payment to be done. And it also be necessary to rely on CD remittance. In summary, exemption did not extend to these two other taxes that we mentioned here. With that, I'm trying to be brief in terms of time that was available to me. So I mentioned the cases that refer to income tax at source, withheld at source. Two situations, coincidence already ruled in 2020, and I will bring them. The first one is special appeal, 1,618,897 in Rio de Janeiro. What was the situation involved? The reporter was Napoleon Maia of our group. What was the situation presented there? The tax withheld at source and the arguing that the company presented in its appeal was that it was installed in a country, specifically France, where they had a treaty to avoid double taxation Brazil and France, so we wouldn't have the withholding at source. So France had an agreement with Embratel to install uh, underwater cables. And so in relation to this uh, communication company, the contract with Embratel, they were receiving the payments. Okay, payment was remitted abroad where is the head office in France? So it was very clear that in that case, it's been said that it was service rendered, but they did not have an office here. They had only abroad in France. So concerning the double taxation treaty, it wouldn't be possible to have the withholding at source. So it's in a specific rule observed in this treaty. The debate was very vast. It was very interesting. The process was rude unanimously. And I have to point out the reference to Professor Schwery about Article 98 of our national tax code. So if the treaty has to prevail or not when it refers to internal norms or rules. It's a, a case of a post ruling because the special rule developed specifically concerning the general rule. And so what refers to this theme interpretation that we had 
was that effectively we should respect the treaty. The objective was avoiding double taxation. The company, I repeat, is installed in France, settled in France. No, that's it. It's in France. Alcatel, the company that was rendering this service, therefore, what refers to this remittance, the amounts. Okay, observing, observing the treaty of double taxation, the treaty, the analysis was done correctly, internalization, observing the procedures for the constitution. Therefore, it was acknowledged that there was no requirement of withholding that source when it refers to this company. We bring you another case involving income tax withheld at source. It's a special appeal, 1,864,227 of Sao Paulo, ruled by Ministro Napoleão and by our first group. It was on uh, August 18, very recent, since telepresential modality we used. Very interesting situation. What was the case per se? Oracle was doing payments to companies abroad, and when it was done, they were doing the tax we held at source. So, according to the norms applied to the case, oh, a case to remit to a, to a country abroad, so withheld at source. Now, the big issue concerning this topic, what's the moment that the fact that the conditioning circumstance happened? The company per se was considering withholding at source when the payment was due. So there was the remittance abroad and the booking was done this way. The payment was done this way. Revenue considered it was wrong and they've done it differently. They, the interpretation was that from the moment there is in the records accounting of the company that that payment would be done, the withholding at source should occur. So as we see, in this case, I'm not talking about a billionaire situation like Petrobras, but we see a simple difference of data may generate controversies, not billionaire. In this case, the difference was around 7 million of rios. If you consider with Hodenat source, specifically at that moment of this accounting booking, so doing the payment or the moment where the account is due and the money is remitted abroad. So there is the appeal was there, presented with exit and uh, very successful. I would say that uh, it reinforces the analysis that refers to tax law when you discuss importation and, uh, and exportation analysis. And so in the national taxing code, what is the analysis? income, the revenue, for instance, uh, is it when there is availability, economically speaking or legally speaking? So the amount is already paid. It was available to the company. So it's not legal because there is not the requirement because it's not due yet. So if you follow this interpretation that was done, 
show the company owned the case saying that they won the case because the difference was that the withholding at search should not be done when there is the booking, when there is the accounting done. It was the moment when there is availability, economic availability. So it was ruled in favor of the company. In the concrete case, it was very well presented. So, of course, it was based on the due date under remittance abroad. I note, Professor Quiroga, the program was around one hour, and I'm here 50 minutes, according to the time I observed. And some questioning, I did not read the questions. I'm used to Zoom, and I see there are some messages. I don't know if we open for Q&A or not. So the share is with Professor Quiroga. I would like to point out that the situation that I had programmed to bring to you in terms of cases concerning the legislation and doctrine, the objective is covered. So I'm here at your service. And so if you have q and I'm here for it. And I thank you again for the invitation that was done by Professor Schwer and Professor Quiroga, two excellent persons in tax world. Thank you very much. Professor Grugel, thank you. Your lecture is always very didactic and coordinated, a very special view concerning the, the presence of the case law. And so we have some q &A. I have two here that I chose. Let's try to answer. And do you, you hear? If we have 10 minutes, we can cover that. There is one question that says, Minister Gurgel, in consumption cheeses in terms of exports, what are the services rendered by Brazilian companies executed or concluded or finished abroad? So, non levi is it restriction of cases that are very exceptional? Do you get the question, please, Professor Gurgel? I understood that talking about an abstract way, it's tough. I will go back to the example that we ruled concerning the engineering project. The engineering design, we acknowledged that it was exportation because the project per se, the design only be useful in, would be useful only in France because they, it was elaborated for that. That's their need. If it was an engineering project that was designed and used by Porto Alegre companies, so it would be executed in Rio de Janeiro or here in Brasil or anywhere in Brazil. You cannot say that you're with that service in a general way. It's a service that has to be exported. You have to see concretely. And the concrete case has to answer, is there export or not? It's interesting to work with concrete cases because it's easier to view it properly. In the ruled case, the first group 2006, with all due respect, no criticism. We are in the academic environment, so we can comment it. Uh, so in case of uh, case laws, uh, okay, I'm bond, uh, so I am under control of constitutionality, etc. But that's in the academia, we are free to do the comments. So uh, in the first group, the interpretation that was done in my concept was wrong because the service, in fact, 
was done here. It was completed here. Okay, concerned the rectification of the turbines. But was it useful here? Was it used here? No, it was used abroad. So in this concept, if the service had been done to a company installed in Brazil and the turbines would be here, no problem. Of course, the same service would be subject to taxation here. But in that case, that fact, it was so clear that the service would be exported. The result, the utility, would be abroad. It would be used abroad. I don't know if I answered your question, but what I understood of it, of your question, you have to analyze case per case, a concrete case to give the answers. So the key for me of the concrete case is checking where the result, where is it used? Where is it useful? Another question, the same position, just to understand it. It's interesting to consider harmonization between uh, understanding municipality and the union. Exports to ISS, is it different uh, of fiscal fees? Fiscal fees are other taxes. We have three taxes here, ISS, fees, and COFINS. Uh, it's an interesting question. See this concept that you have to harmonize the interpretation, what refers to import and export as well of services. In case of freighting of greater bus, for instance, there was there a question concerning the payment of services interpretation of uh, remittances. So the answer there was on services. It's important to harmonize. Otherwise, you're working in terms of taxation with different concepts, i.e. Some, some say it's export, so it's federal taxation, and you say, no, it's not because it's municipal tax. Of course, we have two different relations here. So in that case, the condition in circumstance is different. There are two. Professor Gruzel, just one more question. Uh, a student asking the following. How is it at court the fiscal fees being levied of CG tax withheld at source when it's payment abroad is a reimbursement of expenses? Do you have any knowledge, Professor, that in fact is not a rendering of a specific service, but it would be reimbursement for expenditures which we don't expect, profits or margins? The apportion of a cloud, I cloud expenses a portion. Let's say reimbursement of expenses. Are you aware how courts are seeing this, or we don't have a position regarding this, Professor Kurog? The first group or the second group for this, I did a sort of a, let's say I saw the lamb steak. Perhaps something went through me and I try to do a special picking about this subject. It's important to say sometimes the subject reaches the Supreme Court, but the merit is not uh, analyzed because in the STJ that we see it's constitutional subject matter. So we don't that perhaps it came to the Supreme Court, but to the merit being studied is in reality, I did not notice. For the time being, we don't have a position. I stress within the Sup STJ Supreme Court, unless I find it difficult, we didn't see it. I'm going to research involving these cases and looking for interesting cases and so forth. Thank you very much, Professor Gurgel. I think, in fact, it was excellent your lecture, as you see, very didactic, bringing 
cases from important cases from our courts interesting where we could see the apply the theory to the practical side and i thank your participation and i invite all students for the second day of tomorrow of our congress please attend and watch through zoom our second day of our congress I pass, uh, I pass the floor to Professor Grusgel to say his final remarks. Thank you very much, Professor Gur Kiroga, Shwedi, all from IBDT. It's a pleasure. Unfortunately, in tech terms, I've been um, betrayed. I placed like I was at the Salon Nobri of USP, the main room of USP. But most of the time, you see here when I collect it, it came DST Jota, so I'm going to leave it like this. It's about the picture on the background. I thought I could do it by the noble room of the University of Sao Paulo. And we always do the events in presence and we have a contact with counselors, students, professors. And it's always important every time we attend an event like this, we all learn debating and debating tax law, which is so dear to all of us. Thank you, Professor Grusgel, and have a lovely evening. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.